Hello, ladies and gentlemen, everybody out there. Good morning. How are you? How's your family? And nice to have you back on Good Morning Holy Spirit channel. If this is your first time of coming to this channel, I'm welcome, welcoming you to the right channel and I'm asking you to subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and press the notification button. And don't forget to share and to like our videos. God bless you. So Good Morning Holy Spirit is a channel where we broadcast you know, um, gospel, our aim is to evangelize and raise awareness about the kingdom of God. And at the same time, we are also bringing our, our tips to healthy living. And this is very important because we wish you to have a spiritual health as well as physical health. Praise be the name of our God. So before we start, go and have a cup of tea. We have not Get, if you haven't gotten out of bed from morning, I'm waiting for you. Go get out of bed, get a cup of tea, and about to start. You know, I always like to ask people, how are you? How are you doing? How's your family? Because I've come to realize that where I am living here in, in London, in England, is very difficult for sometimes you see people, they can live in one place for years, and they don't even have a neighbor. They have a neighbor, they haven't seen them, they don't know what they look like, and they don't even say hello. And some people are in isolation, they don't even have someone to say to them, hello, good morning. And I'm saying to you, hello, good morning, how are you? Get up from bed, make a cup of tea, come and have a sit down, come on, let's listen to the word of God. Hallelujah. God bless you, God bless you. All right, so we're about to start now. Today I have a little bit of hassle with my connection, I've been going all over the place. Um, so don't mind my hair. I took off that my hair. I'll do another one, don't worry. So just listen to the word of God. Not about, <laughs> just listen to the word of God. Praise be the name of our God, hallelujah. Oh my God. So um, today I am going to talk on the topic that says, the important things you need to know before you say, I do. The important things you need to know or you need to do before you say, I do. And when I'm saying that, we already know what I'm talking about. We're talking about, you know, um, marriage and courtship. So my, uh, courtship preceded the marriage. So after courtship is the marriage. But you know, have you heard what popular saying people normally say that a broken relationship is better than a broken marriage? Mm -hmm. I believe you heard that over and over. Sorry, you should just in my seat. So courtship is that time that you need to know a lot of things about your spouse. The time for truth telling, the time for revealing secrets, the time to pray together. The time to plan your marriage is the time to plan your family. So it's a very important time. And there are things that we need to um, watch out for when we are in courtship and planning to get, mar to get um, married. So that's what I'm going to be discussing today. And don't forget my last video was on um, danger of cohabitation. And if you haven't watched that video, you're missing something. Go and watch it, right? about the danger of cohabitation, right? Or consequences of cohabitation. I almost forgot the title. Consequences of cohabitation. But today I'm saying something very positive here. Before you say I do, what do you have to do? Let's go. So we are going to be reading from the Bible. We are going to be reading from Genesis 29. So we're going to read from Genesis chapter 29. And remember, this is part of our Bible studies. So um, Genesis 29, we're going to be reading from verse 11 to 20. So bring your Bible, bring your Bible, open to Genesis 29, 11 to 20. I think I need uh, my bigger Bible. So I need to get a bigger Bible. Just give me a minute. 
have it, um, two Bibles here. One of them is very tiny. So, so we're going to be reading from Genesis 29. Okay. We are reading from verse 11 to 20. So, I read from here. And Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. And Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's brother and that he was um, Rebekah's son. And she ran and told her father, and it came to pass. When Laban heard the, th the tidings of Jacob, his sister's son, that he ran to meet him. He ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him into his house and told Laban all things, all these things. And Laban said to him, Surely thou art my bone and my flesh. And he abode with him the space of a month. And Laban said unto Jacob, Because thou art my brother, shouldest thou therefore save me for nought? Tell me, what shall thy wages be? And Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah was um, tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. And Jacob loved Rachel, and said, I will save thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. And Laban said, It is better that I give her to thee, that I should give her to another man, abide with me. And Jacob saved Laban for seven years because of Rachel, and they seemed unto him but a few days, for he loved, for he loved to have her. Praise God. So that is the last one. So the last one says that Jacob saved Laban for seven years and it was for him as nothing because he did it for the love that he had for uh, Laban's daughter, Rachel. Praise God. So just two things that I need to um, point out here. Um, remember, Laban is um, Jacob's uncle, and he has two beautiful daughters. First one is Leah, and second one is Rachel. So hold that. And then Jacob um, um, is proposing to marry Rachel, but he has agreed to walk. So the wages that he was supposed to be paid be used as the bride price or the marriage right for Rachel. I do apologize. It's a lot of um, police van moving around here. I do apologize for the noise. So, um, so he was ready to to save, to work, to save for Rachel. All right. So, and seven years is nothing to him. Praise God. So, and um, from that scripture. We can see how love, how love can be very strong. Because if you love a woman, I'm talking to the, to the guys now, if you love a woman, you can do anything for her and you don't feel anything. So that is how it is. When you meet the right person, that's how you feel. You don't feel any pain or anything. Only thing you feel is love and you can do anything to please your wife to be. Praise God. So we are going to be looking at courtship. So one of the important things for us to do before you say I do is courtship. That's my wedding ring. I did mine, but my courtship was very chaotic. Very, very chaotic courtship. And you know, I always like to um, share my own, my own story. Uh, my my courtship was so strict because um, I'm born again, 
and when I met my husband and it was like the pastor drawing lines, everything, you have to do this, you have to do that. At some point I was angry because they didn't even have time to like get to spend time with my spouse, but because everything has to be done in the pastor's house. I find out that that wasn't really good because after the wedding, like the first three months, we were just like strangers because we didn't really have time to get to know ourselves. So yours will not be that way. That's why I'm bringing this up. So I don't want you to get to where I was. I don't want you to be a stranger with a man that you just said I do to him because it takes, it takes me like a whole one year to get to know him. You understand? It did took me for over a year. So I don't want that to happen to you. So that's why I'm doing this. So the things that we have to, to know, and I'm talking about Christian courtship here, Christian courtship, you know, because before you get married, you need to get to know someone you're going to get married. So a Christian courtship is that period before marriage when a Christian brother and sisters make plans. So the first thing in the courtship is to make plans. Plan your marriage, plan the future. You have to plan about, um, you know the thing that's very funny about planning the names, the names of your children. That's the time you start planning how many children you're going to have. What will be the name of the first one? How many boys or how many girls? Yes, you can plan and pray about it. God will help and that come to pass, but it's not everything we plan for that comes, depending on God's will. So it's the time to plan, you know, the kind of house, where you want to spend your honeymoon, where you want to spend your marriage, where you want to live, the kind of things you, you want your wife, how you're expecting, what's your expectation of your wife and your husband after the marriage? That's, that's the time for planning. So Christian, all courtship is the time to interact. Like I just told you that I had a very chaotic courtship. It's 18 hours. I had a very chaotic courtship and I told you, I did not have time to interact with my spouse because that is one-on-one. -on -one. Although we sit down because like everything is in the pastor's office. So pastor is here, the wife of pastor is there and you are there. So you're talking to your spouse before the pastor. So you didn't, I don't really have that privacy. I didn't have that privacy or that confidentiality you know, that whatever you're saying between both of you. So, you know, when you are talking before pastor, you can't really interact. You know, there are things you're supposed to ask him, you know, but you'll be shy or he will be shy, you know. So I don't want you to have my kind of question. I want you to have a good one. So it's a time for you to interact together. Sit down, have a cup, cup of tea, and then have juice and talk about things. Plan your future, the future of your children, your own your job, what you like, what you don't like, and set your ground rules as well. It's very important to set your ground rules, what you like, what you don't like. That is the time to say all these things, the kind of food you like to eat and what I like to eat as well. So it's a time for us to talk about all these things. It's a very nice, sweet, beautiful experience. Christian courtship is very, very, if you have missed your courtship, it's a very nice experience. Even though my one was chaotic, like I said, but I miss the chaos that I don't have privacy to chat with him. He's coming with his pastor. I'm coming with my pastor. So sometimes I don't really know what, what that happened. And this is in the 21st century. But everything working together for good for those who fear God. So, and then you have to, it's the time for you to reach a compromise on so many issues pertaining to the future. So you need to reach a compromise, like I said. What she likes, what you like, what you don't like, these are the things. What she wants, is that what she want, that was that your expectations? So it's time to iron out those little things, you know, about your planning, you know. Also the wedding as well. You know, some of us we can be very extravagant as women. We want big wedding, we want the fairy tale type. It's a time for you to sit down together and agree on cutting your, your expenses according to your size of your pocket or your income. The next one now is 
courtship is very important and is necessary for intending couple to observe during which the proper um, biblical foundation must be laid. So as Christians going to courtship is a time for you to come together in prayers. It's a time to get to know the man you actually wanted to marry or the woman you wanted to marry. Because sometimes, you know, we say all that glitter is not gold. By the time you get in, into that man, you find out that mm -mm, this wasn't what I thought. So it's, it's time for you to see what is the level of his faith in God. Although they pretend a lot, men pretend a lot. I have to say that once they need that lady, they do everything to make sure that they tick all the boxes. But if you're going to be a pretender kind of a, a, a spouse, to that woman, you're committing sin, and that is punishable by God. So if you're hiding your attitude, hiding your behavior, you're trying to, 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 to model a behavior that you know you're not, just because you want to get her. Remember, you are an unbeliever. You're an unbeliever. And what you do, God will judge it. It's called iniquity. Iniquity can never go unpunished. The Bible says you should not deal with the wife of your your youth treacherously. So you're dealing with your wife treacherously, and God will judge. So courtship is a time for both of you to pray together, read the word of God together, and share your experiences of salvation. When did you give your life to Christ? Let her tell you, and you tell her, what was your experience when you gave your life to Christ? What do you like to do for the Lord? Are you a worker? What department are you? Do you enjoy your service? You know, you have to get to talk about those things. It helps for you to know, know the foundation of your spouse. Praise God. So you can read that from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21. I'm not going to be reading all of this. And then... You can also read that from Genesis 24, verse 54 to 59. So courtship is also that period that we get to know each other okay? intimately without engaging in sexual relationship or any form of illicit romance. So courtship, Christian courtship, is that time that you get to know each other intimately Talk about intimately that like you, 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 when you're together, you feel free. Right? It's not a time to have, to be indulging in, in, in that kind of uh, intimate relationship. You know what I'm talking about. That's not what courtship is all about. It's not that time. And you have to be careful. I know a lot of people say, I like to have a pick. There's nothing wrong if you go peck your partner. And some people say, I like to have a handshake or I like to have a hug when you're departing. Fine, you can. But remember, the Bible says, take heed. You that say you stand, else you fall. Because from kissing to pecking to, to, to hugging, the devil will come in. And one thing that is really sad is, and in fact, these days I, I struggle to get to understand what is waiting, you know? So some people may think that, oh, I am a cake and, you know, I'm in my 40s, so I am not too a cake. But what I know, according to biblical principle, marriage is honorable and the bed is on the fire. So people having that relationship that intimate relationship before marriage, and when they are coming out, they're covering the veil. The veil we are covering on the face was meant for virgins or people who are virgin in the Lord, who, ha who have been waiting on the man and they found the man and they are keeping themselves holy, waiting on that wedding day. And that's when you cover your veil. But now someone is pregnant with twins they are still having veil on. Someone has slept with this man over and over. They still wearing the veil. The veil is in the Bible. People need to read about it. If you have slept with that man, 
Don't cover the veil on your face. Just put it behind you. And that is not, that is called marriage blessing. If you're going to tag it as a wedding, well, it's a wedding, but do not cover your face because it's a sin. It's deceitful. So you don't have this question, it's not a time to indulge. If you want to, if you know that you want your wedding to be grand and you cover your face and everything, please do not engage in illicit intimate relationship. You know what I'm talking about. So intending couples should pray. I've already said that you can attend events together. But when attending event together, you have to be careful of saying, because we attend event together, we have to book hotel. We are, you're going to sleep in one room and I'm going to sleep in the other room. Perfect. That's a perfect planning. Fantastic. But remember, John 10.10 10 says that the enemy, the devil is going to and fro looking for whom to devour. So if you are looking for that glorious and beautiful wedding, you're looking for that wedding that, you know, heaven will smile on you. You have to flee. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. And the Bible also says that we should flee from all appearances of evil. You can book seminar, marriage seminars. You can book and attend with your partner. But when you finish, let her go her way. You go your way. You can chat on the phone. You can meet up in an open place, you can sit down together, you can, so you can go shopping together. You have to pre, be careful how to relate in enclosed places because it could lead to, you know, that area of intimacy that will not please God. So Christian courtship is very important. The Bible say in, in Romans 12, you say, I beseech ye brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your body as, as a holy sacrifice unto the Lord that is worthy and acceptable. For this is your reasonable service. Our service is to present our body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. Our body is not for sin. So while you're doing courtship, do not allow the devil to bring in sin. Some people will say, oh, I will not know if she's a man or if she's a woman and da, da, da. Of course. Because we read so many things on the internet, a man married to a woman and woman turned to man and all that. Of course. Those things happen. But I'm talking about in Christendom. I'm talking about a believer. A man and a woman who are born again believers. This is a video for you. I don't believe someone will be a man pretend to be a woman in the choir of your church. I don't think so. So when you want to marry, marry in the Lord. And also, I mentioned in my video of a danger of co um, cohabiting, I mentioned that you need to get yourself checked. Check everything. Take your wife to the GP. In fact, you can pay a private um, laboratory. Let them do ultrasound, full body scan, check everything and be sure that there's no fibroid in there. There's no problem in the womb. The womb is in this place. And the man, check your, uh, uh, your sperm count. Make sure that everything is fine. And if you have any problem, Treat it before you say, I do. Do not assume that when you finish, that miracle is going to happen. I just want to share uh, one, one little experience of, uh, of someone that I know who is close to me, who a man deceived her, a man who called himself a man of God, a pastor, deceived her. Pretending that the marriage is holy, decline all the tests that he is a pastor, is a man of God. By the end of the marriage, the lady found out that he was important. And guess what? He said to the lady, keep it to yourself, keep it between us. 
You can go out there and make babies and bring the babies to me. How can you send your wife to go and commit adultery? So before you, those kind of situations happen, please make sure your blood tests are done. All the scans are done and you have your clear result. And if things are not clear, there's no HIV, there's no herpes, there is, there is no um, um, uh, hepatitis, there's no all these uh, fibroid and cervical um, um, ectropium and all those things. There's no distended um, tubes and all that. So I'll, I'll, when you have all these things, then it's fine. Once there's a problem, treat it before you say, I do. Next thing now is, so discussion about dreams should also take place and visions. And, and also, like I, I said earlier about plans. So discussion about your, your visions and dreams. Although at that time, you know, when you, you found her and she found you, you found, you found him, everything is so, you're, you're, you're so excited. So your vision is always like you're seeing him, you're two, of, two of you are doing wedding or something. It's fine. Keep sharing, keep praying together, keep studying the word of God together, and God will bless your marriage. And then you also have to share any malignancy you will have or any uh, genetic diseases like sickle cell anemia please tell your partner i'm as i am ss so that your blood group can be checked if your blood group are not compatible or let's say your partner is as your as you have to prepare that you're going to bring in innocent child one of them is going to be sickle uh, is going to be a sickler and what shall it profit you to know that that man is ace and you are ace and you're getting married to him and end up having a sick love for a child? Right? Gone are those days that are mothers and fathers. They, get mar they got married innocently. They were not aware of all these tests. Now they are all tests in place. They say love is blind. I believe that Christian marriage and it, love, for me, I believe love is not blind. Love is for you to open your eyes very wide. If a woman is your blood and her blood not compatible, it's going to hurt, yes. You have to know these things first before you move the relationship to the next level. Don't fix your date for the wedding and then go and find out that she's got thalassemia, she got sickle cell. You have to also look for things about mental health, schizophrenia, bipolar, depression, anxiety. Although depression is something that a lot is very common, the history of psychosis that people have mental retardation in the family, you also need to check about it. I know we serve a God that is able to do all things and we cannot use somebody's, um, whatever happened to someone to compare that it will happen to you, but that is a point to pray. You get to know that someone in that family, a people, people run mad in that family and you make decision that I am marrying her, it doesn't matter anything. I'm marrying him, it doesn't matter anything. Fantastic because you know about it and you're going to take it to the place of prayer and God will change the situation for you. God will save a God that is able to do all things. Hallelujah. So now also, um, Another discussion is your past relationship. You need to discuss your past relationships. Don't pretend to say to the man, I'm a virgin, when you know you're not. You know you're not a virgin, you've had so many relationships. Please tell the man, okay, I know I'm born again, I gave my life to Christ, but before I gave my life to Christ, I was A, B, C, D. I had a relationship with Mr. A, I had a relationship with Miss A, I had a relationship with Mr. B, a relationship with Miss B. So keep, you know, just share those relationships you had before. And that will help. So in case tomorrow, any of you bump into your exes, then there's no surprises. Because, oh, my wife told me about you that it was once your girlfriend, oh, we are now married. 
and there's nothing you can do about it. You understand? So you need to tell your wife about the past relationship. And also tell your husband, your spouse also about abortion as well. I know this is a very critical point because some people are like, oh, why should I tell him I had abortion? You should tell him that you had abortion, even if you don't want to tell him how many abortions you've had. But I believe that if you're a child of God, you should tell the man you had abortion and maybe one, two, three abortion, you were in the world and that happened. If he wants to marry you, he will marry you just the same way you are. So it's not that after he has married you, you cannot have a child. Investigation started. They said, oh, your womb was destroyed because you had abortion. You tell him from the courtship, I had abortion some years ago. Let's do some tests and find out if everything is fine with me before I say I do. And then you guys go do your investigation and everything is fine. You go and marry her because nobody says sent. We all make mistakes. And that is why the blood of Jesus is there for us to wash us from sins. Hallelujah. So next one now is, um, you're also intending couple, you should be able to discover each other's strengths and weaknesses. I've already explained that you have to be able to look at your uh, likes and dislikes. And also, you have to also look about what is this person's upbringing? Because we're coming from two different homes. I have to also share my own, another one of my experience. Right? I, brought, I was brought up in a family where my parents, both of them are civil servants, and they are always like, you know, busy. We have house help that does all the chores and all that. And we were like, always like going to school. We have house help that will do all those chores. So, but... Although when I come on holiday, we come on holiday, my parent, my mom in particular, will help us say, you have to know how to cook, how to wash, how to clean, right? So but when I got married, and it's just like me and this man in the house, so I got to realize that I am the one to wake up to sweep, I'm the one to mop, I'm the one to wash dishes, I'm the one to do laundry, I'm the one to do the ironing, I'm the one to cook food. I'm the one I'm going to walk, and he's going to walk. And when we come back, he will be there reading newspaper. And I'm the one inside the kitchen doing all the things and cleaning. I was like, what's going on here? So the first three months was so chaotic. I had to say, you know what? The marriage is over. I can't take this. I had to, I had to go back to my parents and say, is that what marriage is all about? You're doing everything. My mom said, yes, that's what marriage is all about. I said, okay, what if I have a house help? My, my parents said, no, you can't have a house help. You need to do everything by yourself. So, and now I came back again. <laughs> came back home, and then I started. I started to realize that, you know what, well, that is my responsibility to do that. So we have to know each other's, um, each other's um, upbringing. There are men that do help. They can help to sweep. They can help to clean. They can help to cook. They can help to wash. Unfortunately, I don't have such man. Are you getting me? So you might not have such man. So you have to prepare yourself as a lady. What's waiting for me there? Laundry, washing, dishes, mopping, cleaning being a mother and walking and doing everything for you are a mother to him first when he goes out and come back you are the wife and you're his mother as well so you gotta make food for him so you have to learn and prepare yourself for all this thing before you go and say i do because some people say i do and they say i do and then they're sitting on in the front of television watching telly and making their nails and all that and then the husband comes back. There's no food. Nothing there for anybody to eat. Then they call the, what is it called? Those um, junk food. Or said to the husband, can you buy junk food? You have to learn to cook. Before you say, I do, do you know how to cook? Do you know how to make dishes? In courtship, ask your husband. 
what kind of food do you like to eat? Is he Englishman? Is he American? Is he Asian? Is it uh, Bangladesh? Is it African? Find out his best dishes. And then also check, do I, do I actually know how to prepare this food? If you don't know how to prepare that food, before you say I do, go and learn. Go, thank God now for YouTube, thank God now for internet, everywhere people are cooking. Don't be lazy. Watch it to the end and make your own diary and try to learn to cook. Because they say the way to a man's heart is through the stomach. I grew up to hear that saying. I don't have any research to back that up. But from my experience of my marriage, I have been married now for 18 years. From my marriage of 18 years, I've been in this ministry of marriage. I want to let you know that. I want to let you know that the way to a man's heart is truly from the stomach. If you can cook nice food for your husband, he will not want to go anywhere. He's looking forward to come home. Especially you cook the nice food and also you are not nagging. It's good. So the way to a man's heart is through the stomach. So you have to learn how to cook lady before you say, I do. And also you, men, you also have to learn what it is to be a husband. The husband is not the one to sit in the sitting room and watch television. You also have to show uh, your wife is a helpmate. He's not a housemate. You need to go in the kitchen and help your wife. You need to mop when you need to mop. You need to do the ironing as well when you have the time. Don't turn your wife to a house help or a slave, please. So all these things have to be going on before you say, I do. If you guys cannot come to a compromise, then fine. Everybody can say goodbye. And then, um, I said there should be no pretense or deception at the stage of courtship. Everybody should be themselves. There's no deception. If you have had a baby, I have to speak this out to ladies out there. If you have had a lady outside your marriage, you had a lady when you a baby when you were younger and accident do happen, we all know you had the baby. Please, the baby is not your sister. The baby is not your brother. Tell this man, this man of God, this innocent gentleman, this brother that has come to you, okay, I have a child. Do you still want to marry me? I've got one, I've got two, or I've been married before. You have to speak the truth and shame the devil. The same thing with the men. Some of you have got what we did what we call a way match and you've got babies and babies and babies. And when you see the lady, you pretend to be a man that just landed from heaven. You need to speak the truth and shame the devil. Tell your wife, I got one, two, three children or one child it was an error and all that. Will you accept my child? And if she said no, or he said no, that's the end of it because God is preparing someone that is coming to accept you for who you are and will be a father to those, that child. So be yourself. All right. So we can also um, read Proverbs 11 verse 14. Okay. I am still um, waiting to get my new glasses. This is not very good. So you can read that. Proverbs 11 verse 14. So now I'm just going to be looking at red flags that you have to watch out for, some red flags. And those are the last things that we have to look in for, some red flags that we have to watch out for. The first red flag is that, okay, before you enter the marriage, there are certain things that you have to watch out for, okay? So number one is about culture, culture, the culture of your wife, 
and the culture of your spouse. That's what we call cross-cultural marriage. So you have to um, watch out that your culture does not clash with that culture and come to a compromise that, okay, doesn't matter what the culture is, I will accept her as my um, wife, okay? Next thing is lifestyle. I've talked about that, how you're eating, how you're drinking, how you're sleeping as well. If you're someone that is snoring so bad, you need to tell your wife to be, or your husband, that I'm snoring a lot. You have to find solution to that snoring before you say I do. Bed waiting. Some people are age of 20, 30, they are still bed waiting. It's a red flag. You know you're having problem with your bladder. You need to report it to your spouse. It's a red flag. Okay? So you have to seek um, treatment for that before you say, I do. And then, alcohol, smoking, and use of in recreational drugs. This is another thing. We are not supposed to mention this kind of things in the kingdom of God. We are not supposed to mention such lifestyle in the body of Christ. But unfortunately, some people are in the church and they still smoke cigarettes. Some people are still hiding in the church and they're still drinking alcohol. Some people are still in the church and they're still doing illicit drugs. It's called lifestyle behaviors. You need to tell your spouse the truth. To say, excuse me, I'm sorry, I am a smoker, but I don't, I'm not a heavy smoker. I'm trusting God to take this away from me. Yeah, pray for me. If she wants to marry you with your smoking, that's her problem. If she doesn't want, then she can depart. She can find someone else. I'm looking for... Next one now is red flags. In-laws, mother-in-law, that's my last uh, red flag. If you want, before I go on there, if you want scriptures to read, you can read Mark 14, 38, Proverbs 15, verse 22. You can also read Proverbs 19, verse 20. And I'm going to talk about the last one, the in-laws. You have to tell your spouse that your, 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 your wife, you have your mother-in-law and your father-in-law and vice versa. You know reason because I have some people, I have someone actually that's closer to me that said to me, I'm not gonna get married. I'm just looking for a man that doesn't have father or mother. I'm looking for a man who is an orphan. Why do you look for a man who is an orphan? Because she said, in-laws are thorns on the flesh. They are the bone of contentions in marriage. So I don't want to marry a man that has father or mother. And then I say to her, when you get married, you're going to have a boy, a baby boy. And then when your baby boy grew up, the person he's going to marry will say, do you have mother and father? And he said, yes, they're sorry, I cannot marry you. I want to marry a man that has no father or mother. And he said, oh, why are you saying that? I said, it's called karma. It's there. So karma draws the line. Galatians 6 verse 7 says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man soweth, he shall reap. So if you're a woman and do not want to marry a man that have father and mother, 
So you should be prepared to die young because your son also, the woman that he will marry will not want to marry, you know, the, 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 the man, the woman, the, the boy that has a that mother. So all I say to people is that get closer to your in-laws. Get to know them. Get closer to them. Make friends with your mother-in-law, make friends with your father-in-law, and vice versa. Get to know your brother and sisters-in-law, right? And visit them, you know, and get to know them. And also you, the man as well, there's what we call apron strings. In that courtship you are, before you say, do you have to make up your mind to break that apron? No apron string when you are tied to your mother. You have to know now that the Bible said that a man shall leave his father and his mother and he will join to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. So they did not say mother or father will come in between. I don't say you should forsake your family. You have to still take care of them or you have to protect that woman you're carrying. That woman that you're going to marry is somebody's child. You need to protect her with the last drop of your blood. You need to stand for her. You cannot take somebody's child and put it in the hand of your family and gang up against her. You have to protect your wife. You have to make up that decision that if I marry her today, I will be with her. I will support her. Come rain, come shine. That is about love. I started looking at Genesis 29. It was love that made Jacob. That's why I brought that scripture up. It's the love of, for, for, for Rachel. It made Jacob to, to labor for seven years without, wage, without wages. Unfortunately, after he had labored for seven years, tradition, like I mentioned, now came in. And then um, the father of the, the women uh, labor and say, according to our tradition, the, the younger one cannot marry before the older one. Then uh, Jacob was given Leah. God, Leah was the older sister of Rachel. And then Laban said, if you want to marry Rachel, you need to do another seven more years work for free. And he had to labor again for another seven years because of the woman he loves. That is what true love is all about. Working for 14 years, saving money in your father's in-law's uh, uh, um, treasury just because you want the woman you love. So it's so sad that sometimes after all this labor, some men carry the woman, the woman now becomes their enemy. May God forbid that for you in Jesus' name. So before you say I do, watch this video. Look at one or two things in this video and see what you can make it right, right? I love to share my experience. I'm not ashamed about it because I believe that sharing my chaotic experience can also help people to improve. So take care of yourself. And I'll be back this time next week. And don't forget to share these videos and keep sharing it until you get to people that actually needed to watch this video. Thank you. Love, love. Bye. See you.